I'm a Rod Tip fan. Aku Justin. say good morning we'll say it to those of you here and to those of you online uh, watching us on, from zoom we are glad that you are part of us this morning and just to say the opening that you saw this morning was yeah. were, were the Ile Oma Day dancers and drummers at Ile Oma Day's uh, graduation ceremony this year here's Mama Fun.
We will know God's truth to be free and self determined. Creator, tell us to remember humanity, glory, and suffering of our ancestors and the honor of the struggles of our elders. Let us strive to bring new vision and life to our people. Let there be peace and harmony among us. Let us be loving, sharing, and creative. Let us work, study, and listen so we may learn, and teach, and cultivate self reliance. Grant us power, O Holy One, as we struggle to resurrect our hearts and our homeland. We will raise our children according to the needs of our nation with discipline, patience, devotion, and courage. We will strive to be the living models of the new direction of our people. Of our people. We are an African people. We, we are, are children of God. Sure. I say, and now we'll have announcements from Minister Hamilton. Minister Hamilton, are you with us this morning? If not, Minister Alicia, we usually use you as a backup. Are you here? Do you have announcements? I do not have any announcements um, besides um, our Medicaid's camp is starting tomorrow, and I'm very excited about that. Um, I think there's a there's an elders meeting tomorrow at 6 on Zoom for Sacramento. And, and I don't have any more announcements. Does anybody have any announcements? No, then okay, no, then, then okay, then. that's it. <laughs>
my God. Again, we'll say I wasn't uh, scheduled to do music this morning, and I actually have, am doing double duty. I also have the historical tribute, so give me a second, and I'll set it up. You're built for it. Well, uh oh. Whoops, you weren't supposed to see that. Can I be heard? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me on live? I'm clear. I'm clear. Yes, 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 okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then let's go. Well, then let's go. Well, then let's go. Did a great job. Did a great job. So, uh, not what I want. Not what I want. Okay, okay, okay. Let's start over. Sorry, folks. Sorry, folks. Okay, let's go. So, this morning's historical tribute, um, I haven't done a historical tribute in a long time, so this morning's historical tribute, hi Mama Keisha, is going to be a fun tribute, I think. Um, it was prompted by two, dif two different things. One uh, was a long time ago at Wolse, we had a discussion about uh, the best black dancers in African American history, and um, with the last time, not the last time, but I was home in D.C. with my brother and we watched an old movie together and those two things caused this tribute. And this tribute is going to start in a strange place. And it's for, um, I know that most of you, some of you won't agree with me that Willie Mays was the greatest baseball player of all time, right? Or that both um, um, Gail, Sayers. Gail, thank you, Gail Sayers and Barry Sanders were the best running backs of all time. Forgive me, Jim Brown and, and Walter Payton, and that not um, LeBron James, and not Michael Jordan, and not Kobe Bryant, but Oscar Robertson was the best basketball player of all time, and the best entertainers, <laughs> that's right, and the best entertainers of all time, for a brother, there was Hugh Masekela, and for a sister, there was Nina Simone, right? Now, I know everybody's not going to agree with me, but, you know, that's my... And so the, the point is, 
when you talk about who is the best, it all comes with, you know, who you, who you like, what your style is, and who you saw, right? Because some of you who think Michael Jordan was the best never even saw Oscar Robinson. So anyway, this morning's historical tribute, so all of that has nothing to do with this morning's tribute, okay? <laughs> this morning's tribute, we're going to, we, it started from the discussion on the best dancer ever, and those dancers were all male, I'm sorry, sisters, and ancestors. So we're going to talk about males, and we're going to talk about ancestors, all right? All right. And um, at the end of it, at the end of the, at the end of this tribute, I'm going to talk about the greatest dance sequence ever caught on tape. Okay, so of course, since I named all those other bests, and so there may be some discussion, but there'll be no discussion. You'll think this is the best. Anyway, any discussion about the best dancer ever in African American history has to include this brother, right? Now, this brother, as you all know, needs no introduction. Michael Jackson. And now we'll just watch the moves that this brother can put on in just this one dance sequence. Now, that was the first time that some of us probably ever saw the moonwalk. And some of us think that Michael Jackson invented the moonwalk. But this is the first moonwalk ever put on film. Brother by the name of Bill Bailey. Back in 1955. Now, Mama Fua just said in the background, I heard you, Mama Fua, that, that Michael Jackson learned all of his stuff from this brother. This brother, James Brown, actually changed dancing in the black world. Mm -hmm. Let's just look at a, a, a sample of his work. My brother minister just said he was the hardest working man in show business, and that's what he was saying. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, I didn't mean to cut James off so soon. But anyway, one thing that I learned after I started doing this tribute is that before James Brown, okay. hi, Mama Thandi, how are you doing? <laughs> before James Brown, if you were considered the blessed, one of the best black dancers, you were a tap dancer. Before James Brown, dancers were tap dancers. And now here's a brother that a lot of us, a lot of black people don't claim, but he was one of us, and as you can see, they, when I say they, I mean people who aren't in here, called him the world's greatest entertainer. Now just watch Sammy Davis Jr. and listen to him. Now, 
Now, you never heard Michael Jackson or James Brown do a solo with dance with no music. Okay, now here's one of my favorite dancers. Anybody know who he is? Yep. Say, say his name. Gregory Hines. Gregory Hines. Gregory Hines, right. Gregory Hines. One of my favorite dancers. He had his brother also. He had his brother also. Now here's the brother who Gregory Hines considered his favorite dancer. His name is uh, Bill Bojangles Robinson. And let me just go. Now, I was watching this with my brother, and at this point, my brother yelled out, Maasai! Maasai! And the reason that he did is because the summer before, we were in Tanzania. <laughs> we were in Tanzania, and we saw this. The Maasai tribe. The Maasai tribe. Yeah. And they belong with the best dancers ever. They're not out of place. And it's amazing to see it live. They actually got me to get up and jump with them. 
I did all right. <laughs> okay, this is uh, again. Uh, this is Bojangles' most famous uh, dance, the stair dance. Now here is G uh, Gregory Hines playing in a movie, his favorite dancer, Bill Bojangles Robinson. And I want you to see what he says about Bojangles, what they say about Bojangles here, and then I'm gonna play something for you. As you can say, at the peak of his career, Bill Bojangles Robinson was the highest paid black entertainer. He died broke and penniless. Okay. And this is Gregory Hines paying tribute to his favorite dancer. And they're both he's 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 doing the the, the dance at the same tempo as, as Bojangles. I thought this was amazing. both in look and sound. Okay. Now this brother, some of you may recognize, his name was, this is from the movie, um, uh, 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 the, uh, the Five Heartbeats, thank you. This is from the, and this brother's name is Harold Nicholson, right? Now, I'm, I have to, Nick, he's one of the Nicholas brothers, and I have to yes, cut the Nicholas, sound down. Yeah, one of the Nicholas brothers. Yeah. Yes, one of the Nicholas brothers. I have to cut the sound down, because there's some words that I don't want you to hear, so yeah. let me. <laughs> Let me first, yeah, let me get it right here, okay. Now pay attention, and you might learn something. Okay, now the reason that I showed him is because he's part of the greatest dance sequence ever, which is next. The gr greatest ever caught on tape, okay? Now, um, again, I was, was with my brother watching an old movie, and we saw this, and I said to myself, I need to do a historical tribute. So, he, so here, here it comes. And this is, of course, the Nicholas Brothers and Cab Calloway. All right, all right. Wait a minute. Uh oh. There we go. I'm getting to it, don't worry. It's coming. Now watch the precision in this dance. And every time I watch this, for some reason I thought about Minister Alicia and I said, you know, I bet she would like this. <laughs> so.
Thank you, well say. That was the greatest dance sequence ever. Hey, Baba John. Hey, what, Baba John. Yes, sir. Uh, my wife won. Uh, my wife won. Uh, Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. Judith Jameson. Judith Jameson. That's been done. That's been done. I I I totally agree. Um, maybe the next time I'll do the sisters. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or somebody somebody else is open to it. All right. Anyway, thank you, well say. Savior Glover is carrying on the tradition. Savior on the tradition. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. I, I doubt we'll ever I, see, I doubt uh, we'll ever see uh, synch synchronized tapping, synchronized in, the tapping in the Olympics. No. I don't know, the next time anybody asks me who's my favorite athlete, I'm going to say the Nicholas Brothers. Because uh, <laughs> they're definitely athletes. They're definitely athletes. And one thing and for one sure, thing for sure, sure where's that rhythm? Rhythm. 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 Yes. Yeah, there's, there's no Harold Nichols, Harold Harold Nichols, Nichols played, Harold Nichols played, um, played um, Little Seymour in Uptown Saturday Night. Yeah, Little Seymour, big, uh, what's his name? Little Seymour, big, uh, what's his name? Little Seymour, big, Big Percy. Big Percy. Thank you, Bob. That was good. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 Beautiful time. Beautiful time. From the cradle 
to the grave we are we are we are the best of struggles that we won't have to bear we are the heir to all the prayers that float upon the air we are we are who So now the Litany of Sacrifice with Brother Katabasi. Thank you, Brother Ty. And, um, is, is that a new song, a new piece? That's uh, India Irie's song. Ah, okay. India Irie. Very well done. Yeah. And also, uh, great tribute, man. Thank that you. Was, Thank, was, you. Was, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun. Thank you. I mean, I got exhausted just <laughs> watching those Nicholas brothers, man. <laughs> Go through those routines and just cringe uh, on those splits, man. <laughs> wow, what a dance sequence. This is the time in the World Second um, for the time set aside for the litany of sacrifice. And um, the inspirational uh, reading this morning comes from the Hustillo, oh. the book of Amenemope. Passage number 10. And the passage says, Do not mislead a man or a woman with pen and papyrus. It is an abomination to God. Do not bear witness with false words, nor injure another with your tongue. Do not tax one who has nothing, nor make your pen write falsely. 
If you find a large debt against a poor person, divide it into three parts. Forgive two and let one stand. You will find that this path, this is a path of life. You will pass the night in sound sleep, and in the morning you will find it again like good news. Better is praise with the love of others than wealth in the storehouse. Better is bread when the mind is at peace than riches with a troubled heart. And so we give our praises to Minamope for writing that passage. And um, also, I was, I was struck with the huge amounts of money that uh, is pouring into these election campaigns, you know, and, um, you know, I wish that uh, some of those, some of those funds, some of those contributions could find their way to the Wilson we'll community. <laughs> I mean, you know, we feel that the work that we are doing here has has importance as as well, and that the work is worthy of support. And so, uh, this is the time to uh, give back some of that of which you have received over the week. And uh, we're very we be, we're very grateful for those contributions. And. Uh, I don't see yeah, I'm looking for the um, for the litany of sacrifice and it'll it'll take just a moment for that to um, to go up. And as, as the litany unfolds. And this is um this is a unis unison part. And then the the second part is we have uh, leaders in community, but this is a unison part. And um, when we're doing these um, these recitations, uh, I'd like to think that those of you in the Zoom audience are involved as well. You know, whether you, you know, wherever you're at in your home, in your, in your personal space or what have you, but uh, yes, join in with us. And the litany of sacrifice says, save us, O Holy One, by your name, vindicate us by your might. Hear my prayer, divine protector. Listen to the words of my mouth. How can we repay the Holy One? For the gifts that have been given to us, we will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the God of our ancestors. We will fulfill our vows to the Creator in the presence of all our people. Gladly we bring our sacrifices to you. We would praise your name, O Lord and Rock, for it is good. And if we could stroll up, there we are. Umoja, unity. We shall strive to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Self-determination. We shall define, name, create, and speak for ourselves. Uchima, collective work and responsibility. We shall build and maintain our own communities together. Our brothers and sisters' problems shall be ours to solve together. Indeed, Leo, purpose. We shall make our collective vocation the building and development of our community and the restoration of our people to our traditional greatness. We shall do as much as we can to make what we can to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we will believe with all our hearts in our God, our people, of our struggle. Um, I say. And so um, there are different uh, ways for you to 
make a contribution. So if the um, and there they are. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so you can send your contributions either by mail, and if you send that to the Wose Community Oakland, you send that to 8924 Holly Street, Oakland, California, 94621. And if you're mailing to Wose, Sacramento, uh, you can send that to the P.O. Box 5271, Sacramento, California, 95817. And if you go on the um, on the wosecommunity.org or the wosesac.org, there are links there with different um, uh, applications like the Cash App and, and, and Velo and some of the other ones that you can also make your e electronic uh, contributions. So uh, many and different ways for you to make a contribution. You know, maybe you want to hold back a few dollars uh, that you send into uh, Sister Harris and uh, send a few <laughs> of those dollars to the Wolsey community. 43 years we've been here. I say, this work. I say. And so um, we feel, you know, that this work is worthy of, of your support. And I know that, um, that many of you uh, do support and, and will support. And as uh, <clears throat> we move to the end of the Lit Now Sacrifice, I'll take just a moment to, to share uh, a few words of prayer. Holy well, One, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Wolsey community and all of its members, wherever they may reside. We thank you for those that took the time to contribute, those that contribute their money, the time and the talent. We thank you for those who in their, in their heart wanted to contribute, but their present economic uh, situation would not allow for them to make a contribution. So we pray um, for a better, a better economic condition for them so that they will be able to contribute in the past. And so, um, we thank you, all of those that uh, that did indeed contribute. And as we close out uh, the Dead Men's Sacrifice, uh, we ask that you open your hearts and open your minds for the message that is to come. And follow the the wise counsel. You know, the, a lot of these these messages are very are very. Uh, powerful and very insightful and it, they're designed to to help you on your spiritual journey open your hearts and mind for the one that will come with the message and uh, and and words of encouragement and wisdom and i would say I, well i know ty's been doing all kinds of work here out here today but i'll i'll let him Okay, so we're going to bring forward the uh, lead minister at Oakland, um, we'll say Oakland, and no other than the amazing one. <laughs> yeah, great speaker, always brings a good and positive message, Minister Mali. Church. You have to be careful about those introductions because you might end up with some expectations that I may not be able to meet. Okay, I was just joking. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I'm still recovering from that very awesome historical tribute. Uh, it reminded me of how 
I was so struck by James Brown that I used to, yeah, my sister's already laughing. I used to put on shows at the house and imagine myself being on stage. I just couldn't do the split part too well, <laughs> but the camel walk and the skate and all that was mine. I couldn't sing that well, but I sure love to dance. I see. And it inspired me to put a 20 year career as an African dancer. It's awesome. Okay. Our heritage. Yes, yes. And it's awesome to be reminded of the connection because there are good times, no matter what it is that we've had to experience as a people, we do have good times. Yes. We do enjoy ourselves and we have not forgotten how to celebrate that yes. with body movement because all of it is integrated. That's why we're so good at it. Because we don't see it as a separate thing. We see it all in unison, which relates to a lot about what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, there is my mantra that I love to open with, and I will continue to do, found in Lucia. Helmsman, do not let the ship go astray. Yeah. Life giver, do not let the people die from need. Provider, do not let the people perish from need. And shade, do not let the people dry up in the sun. And protector, please, please, do not let the crocodile seize us and drag us away. You notice I, I really like that part because there are a lot of crocodiles present yes. constantly. And without the divine protection, a lot of us wouldn't be here today because we got seized at certain points, but the divine kept it from dragging us away. I say? I say. So my topic and my message today is spirituality versus religiosity part two. What does Mott got to do with it? I say y'all. Yes, I'm borrowing it from Tina Turner. <laughs> what does Mott got to do with it? Well, first of all, uh, if you remember from last week, we talked about think Mott, do Mott, speak Mott. Yes. Well, to be able to carry that out, we need to know what Mott is. Yes. We need to learn Mott. Yes. And so for us to have a full connection to the principles we say, which uh, Balotai reminded me, it's the sacred African way. Last week, I was talking about the African sacred way. Kind of switched it up. Mm. But it's truly the sacred African way. I say. That is defines what the Wose Community Church is and what it's about. And if we try to implement that in our personal lives and in our community, we need to understand what we're talking about. We got a whole lot of material. We got sacred texts. We got a, a, a whole manuscript of songs about what we think about, what we talk about, and what we believe. Yet, do we know how to express that amongst others who don't already know what we're talking about? Because that's what the work is really about. And each of us has a role in that work. It ain't just on the ministers. It ain't just on the elders. Each of us has that sacred tax. So if we are practitioners and believers in the sacred African way, our starting point is to understand spirituality versus religiosity. One of the reasons why that's kind of my pet topic, because as a recent escapee from over 20 years in the Christian faith, one of the struggles I had was that, yeah, I, I could read the Bible, yeah, I could understand certain things, but it seemed to not have a connection within me that didn't contradict what I was seeing in real life. See, religiosity want you to accept things, to believe things, even though life itself is in contradiction. 
That's not by mistake. That's not by accident. Because those who presented religion to us had an agenda. Yes. See, all of us have been indoctrinated. Because there's been four to five hundred plus years of religiosity where people who did not look like us got us to belief system that sounded kind of familiar. Because in history, actually, we were the originators of it. Some of them. They took it and used it as a weapon against us. And in that religiosity, they convinced us of things that helped support their agenda. We just weren't given the memo. Because in order to enslave people, to subjugate people, it was a good trick to get the same people to one believe they weren't really human and to be treated, mistreated, and abused and be okay with that. Teach, teach. Otherwise, why would we even allow the same people who came with missionaries into our land and said, we're going to teach you how to be civilized to a people who were already civilized thousands of years before they got there. Yes, yes. While they were still figuring out which cave to live in, we were civilized. And here they come to civilize you. And we're so good at it that they could do things that any of their Bible is contradicted that they can still do them and get away with it anyhow. Yeah. If you don't think that that is very true, that all you got to do is go to Africa today. See, last year I was blessed with the opportunity to go to Ghana. One of the sites that really caught my eye was when I was in one city, there was this whole day school that had originally been a mission place for all the offspring of the missionaries. Oh, y'all don't understand? Yeah. Priests that are not supposed to be married. Yeah. Missionaries that ain't supposed to be doing yeah. the things that the Bible says don't do. And they had a whole building full of their offspring. Yeah. Who yeah. was they dealing with? Yeah. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to go to the top. Because, see, spirituality is our way to get healed. Spirituality is our way to overcome an intentional indoctrination to us. Man. And that spirituality is built on my aunt. Man. There are seven principles identified by Ma. And then on our page 271 of the book that will soon become one of our sacred texts, Ma, the guiding principles, they're listed. I'm going to share them with you. Page 271. And they are justice, harmony, integrity, determination, reciprocity, balance, and truthfulness. In other texts, they're, they're described with some other words, but basically, those are the seven principles that my eye, when truly expressed, should have those aspects, should have those characteristics. Now, I'm sure many of you are aware, many of you understand what those words mean, but how do they apply spiritually? Bad, bad, bad. How does that work? Bad. How does something you look at a piece of paper work out within you? Well, that's the issue that we're addressing today. Okay. Because this all sounds Good. All right. This is really intellectually pleasing. I mean, it's impressive. Mm. I know it impressed me the first time I saw it. So it's like, oh, we. And even when you read things like the Beatitudes and the commandments on words, they seem pretty impressive. The challenge is that Ma'at is not correct if it doesn't exist on all the levels. It can't just be what you read. It can't be just what you think. But it also has to be do something that you can speak to, that you can activate, because it has an outcome. 
if my art is done correctly, there be, should be an outcome. Now I heard about outcome when I had a long meeting, a really successful and creative meeting with Bob Jahi about the spiritual out curriculum. You don't just do things because they sound good to do. You do things because one, they're right to do, but two, they must have an impact. And three, there should be a discernible, measurable, and experiential outcome. Yeah, say that. If it doesn't result in something you can actually see and experience, what good is it? Hey. Okay, I'll tell it somebody. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, I want y'all to be with me. Don't be scared. It has to have an outcome yes. that is discernible, that is measurable, and can be experienced. Yes. It can't just mean my private joy. Why is he walking around grinning all the time? Because he knows my eye. That can't just happen <laughs> if we are a people yes. say we follow the sacred African way. I say, say that. And to see everybody here having an impact. Yes. Everybody here should be walking with a glow. Oh, y'all don't feel me. Everybody should have something to be happy about. Something to express. It don't mean other stuff go away. But it does mean that we have a discernible, measurable experience that overcomes all of that. Yes. Say that. I know y'all have been through some things. And I don't stand here because I haven't either. I've had some real powerful tragedies. My sister and me, her, know what our family has been through. Y'all have been too. But if my aunt is truly within, then on the without, that is what they'll see when they see you come. They don't see your tragedy. They don't see you wishing that you were somewhere else or someone else. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't feel me. Y'all can feel me today? Can I get somebody here today? Understand, I, I know that it's a bit of a weight. And I'm talking about W-E-I-G-H-T. It's a, a really a weight to understand that there's a responsibility that is connected to the things we say we believe in. But I remember a time that we were called to do stuff a certain way. I know I come from a household, it wouldn't be, don't care how raggedy it would be on the outside, there's stuff that wouldn't go on on the inside. And when we had those standards, when we held to those things, our families did better. Yes. They accomplished a whole lot. Yes. And they were able to sustain a measurable improvement. There are statistics now saying that for the last 10 to 20 years, that is not true. Damn, damn. And it ain't because black folks is different. It's because the repression and the suppression and the oppression eventually wears people down. Yes, okay. say that. And so we end up with the leftovers. Folks that are here are victims who have survived as opposed to people who thrive. Come on, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My art is a solution, is an antidote that allows us to thrive. We are not measured by the conditions in the hood. We're not going to be measured by how much crime and so forth that is negative. We are measured by how we have chosen to live regardless of the other circumstances. We are not going to be defined by those things. Kuji Chagalia says we define and we identify and we create 
for our sins. Yes. But we have to be careful about the tools we use. That's right. We can't continue to take what the indoctrinators have given us as our truths. Mm. Say that. We can't continue to let their measure, their standards, their morals, their values be ours. Yes, right? say that. Why are we be ill? Because we're mimicking the sick. Yes. Yes. What would you expect the outcome to be yes. from people who have lived in contradiction all their known existence and come to a country that was built on them same contradictions. They're producing a constitution and a declaration of independence while holding 400,000 people hostage, driving another million people off their land, and then they're going to produce something good? Yeah. Right. Well, good for who? Good for who? So yes, the living contradiction of coming from a country that is at its origin ill, expecting it to produce something well. I believe, what was it? One of our philosophers said, you can't continue to have someone who shows who they are continues to be who they are, and you keep expecting them to do something different. Yeah. 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 Because it's not by accident that we do that. Mm -hmm. See, that's a part of the religiosity. You get told that if you keep waiting, mm -hmm. things will get better. Mm -hmm. You don't do nothing to make anything better. Right. Just keep waiting. <laughs> because Someone outside of you, a Messiah, will rescue you. That's so you'll get saved by something other than your own actions. Yes. <laughs> and it's a great psychological game. Because you keep waiting here while other people keep gaining. Why hasn't the gap? between the bottom and the top ever got closed. We got more black millionaires than ever before. Look at all these athletes with multi-million dollar contracts. And is poverty done? Yeah, no. Childhood poverty is at 40%. And they just canceled an opportunity for a child tax credit for those who claim it's about the family. Contradiction. We can't be surprised. How are we going to keep saying we're surprised? Because black folks do keep saying that. Some of them. The issue of us waiting is a spiritual issue. But it ain't supported by the spiritual guides we have in place if we so choose them. Reciprocity is one of my strong things I love and keep referring to. Because most of us have a very imbalanced, unhealthy relationship with reciprocity. Yes. We love to sacrifice. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just me. Damn, some damn, people out there. Damn, damn, See, we love, it, they have this thing. It's better to give than receive. <laughs> As if so there's something wrong with receiving. They keep telling you to forgive and forget. Yeah. But they don't tell you to change. Mm -hmm. Just okay. keep forgiving. Come on, keep Come on. forgetting. Come on. Come on. That waiting philosophy, that relationship. See, reciprocity tells us it's supposed to be a mutual exchange. Okay. You give as you have been given. You receive and you return. There's a dynamic that says if you're just giving things repeatedly and not receiving anything, that's an unhealthy relationship. Okay. So there are some folks that tell you you get married, but stay. Stick and stay through abuse, through hardship, through being 
peaked and to the point that many people die in those relationships because that's that dynamic. Man. See, reciprocity says, well, <laughs> you don't know how to return some. I must be with the wrong person. And that means I have to be able to protect myself by giving to me freedom from the sickness that you express. Yeah. If we don't inherit and inhale these things, then why would you wonder why I ain't happy when I get up in the morning? Mm. You're in an unhappy circumstance and it don't change till you remove yourself from it. You don't keep waiting for the sick person to get well. You don't keep waiting till they get tired of abusing you. You don't keep waiting till even though they're not introduced to something that would change them, that they'll stop doing what they know best how to do. You don't reciprocate by giving to you the blessings that you've been willing to give to others. Yes. I'll let that sit with you for a moment. All right, yeah. Fair exchange, no right. oh, Fair exchange. Mutual wall. I share. You share. I give. You give. You receive. I give. And that is built in mind. That's what allows you to have harmony. That's what allows you to have balance. That's what allows you to have right order. That's what allows you to be truthful to yourself first. This ain't working. Nah, uh -huh. which is different to be honest. I mean, honestly, a lot of us don't really feel comfortable with the truth. Damn, damn. Especially because it comes from a place maybe you ain't ready to hear. Uh -huh. That's being honest. Damn. But truthfully, this really is sick. And I'm a part of it. Mm. Okay. I won't. Damn, I won't. Damn. <laughs> Prove it. Because that is a message in itself. <laughs> Each of these values, these moral guidelines, are suggestions about how you should live. But they're not commandments. Right. They're not commandments. God is not immediately waiting to punish you if you don't follow them. Right. Right. The, the, the dynamic of spirituality is there is free will and there's God's will. And they work best when they merge. But they still are allowed to exist. That's why there's issues. Because sometimes our will, way out of pocket from the divine will. Mm -hmm. And it gets better the more it gets closer together. Yeah. Some of you people know about that here? Yeah. I know I do. Yeah, yeah. I know what it's like to be out of pocket for a long time. Amen, Lord. See. <laughs> It was a time when I wasn't wearing robes, when I wasn't here, standing in places trying to talk about the divine word. And that life was miserable. Maybe I was the only one. Most of y'all been good for a long time. Y'all track record is pretty smooth. What do you think, Calabazzi? I, I, I can't even pretend because my sisters and my Daughters show up and they know. If I was to tell y'all something, they'd be giving me the face. <laughs> so understand that's truthfulness. I give a true picture of where I really am. Right. And I'm still growing, fortunately, because that's what thriving is. Thriving is a continual process of getting better. Yeah. So understand, y'all, today, when it comes to the value of spirituality versus religiosity. If you were a robot, maybe commandments would work. <laughs> but when you are human, spirituality works the best for us. And it doesn't take a struggle. The thing that takes a struggle is when you make a commitment. Because you're the one that keeps fighting the process. Don't nobody force you not to commit. You keep fighting with commitment. And there's a solution to that, too. Minister Marcolisi always quotes, and I, and I fell in love with it, the passage in the UCL on 42, where it's about diligence. 
See, with diligent effort, you will maintain your commitment. It won't have to be perfect. It just has to improve on a regular basis. So the next day you may wake up is another opportunity to get better at it. Y'all are shame with me with that? Y'all can amen with that? Amen. Every day you're allowed to wake up is another opportunity to get better at it. That's diligent. I put in the best effort I'm capable of. Not your effort, not as best as measured by you, but the best one I am capable of. And I get better at it, stronger at it, and improve on it the more I do it. Now, that won't work for the splits. <laughs> I almost died watching them do the splits. Because I couldn't even imagine my body <laughs> surviving one of them. Yet, with the work of my heart, which is a holistic work, Mind, body, and spirit. Your body improves. Your health gets better. Yeah. Mentality improves. Yeah. Your mind gets better. Yeah. And your spirit strengthens. So, what about the outcomes? What about what your goal is really aiming for? Well, there's another book of Ma'at. One of uh, Emil Tepp's favorites. It's Ma'at, The Moral Idea in ancient Egypt, and I end with this. I have done what people love and divinities praise. I give bread to the hungry, clothes to the naked. I listened to the appeal of the widow. I gave a home to the orphan. I turned my back on the lover of lies. And I did not judge the blameless. I answered evil with good. And I did not seek after wickedness. Now, I is an action plan. It's not just for your head. It's also for what you do. Because that's what lasts longer. It's what you do to others, with others, and because of others that lives beyond you. So if we're looking for something, we don't have to wait. You can do that right here and right now. Yes. We can change our relationships with one another. And that's what I want to do on a daily basis. Every day I get an opportunity to be better at treating myself yes. right and treating you right. Yes. Just because it's right. It's right there. I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say. Thank you, Minister Miley. I think that's um, one of um, one of your stronger messages. It's yes. One that really resonates with me. Yes. So, the uh, doors of the church are open. Yes. So, if there's anybody out there that has not become a member of the Wose community and you've been coming online and coming on Zoom, or even if you've been coming by the sanctuary and you've been sitting in and listening, um, hopefully you're ready to make that decision now. The Wose community is a home for like-minded people. And we have presented ourselves to the community and the greater community for some 43 years. Yes. So we're not a new organization. Mm -hmm. And we feel that um, our philosophy is a good one. It is, it is a strong one. It is one for like-minded people that we can glorify ourselves, we can glorify our ancestors unapologetically for the work that they have done since the earliest of time. 
our history is replete with the grandeur and the accomplishments of our ancestors. And we honor that here at the Wose community. And we strive to emulate those lives that have proved to have been so positive and so grateful. You see it throughout the service. See, when you come to the Wose community, it, 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 it is a complete, it is complete process. And the different aspect of the service that continued to feed into that acknowledgement and the veneration of our ancestors. One of the strongest ones you saw this morning through the historical tribute. You know, we presented information that uh, many people just simply did not know or would not have known. But this is the kind of information, um, you know, that, 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 that we bring. In our community affirmation, it is dear. And the songs that we sing, it, it, it is all dear. And so we're reaching out. Anyone that's looking for a home, make it known. If you're on Zoom, uh, put up one of those little animated hands and, uh, <laughs> and someone will, uh, will come in and, and acknowledge that. And if there's anybody here in the, in the, in the audience and the, uh, here at the Jose uh, community that are ready to step forward and say, yes, I want to be a part of this community. Yes. Now is the time. Yes. Now is the time. And I can't uh, really see what's going on in the Zoom world. But evidently, no one has uh, has come forward, and uh, everybody here in, in the audience, most are already members. So uh, the doors are open; will continue to be open, uh, even after this service closed. You can still contact us through our website and say you had time to think and reflect, and you you want to be a part of this community, and we'll make it happen. Lift, lift every voice. Okay, we're going to be moving into our closing song, the so-called uh, Black National Anthem. Lift every voice, and I don't think we're going to tackle verse two today. Huh? <laughs> I think we'll stick with our opening and our closing verse. We haven't really uh, uh, sung that verse enough. <laughs> okay. Ms. Kikisha reminds me that she brought the word. Thank you, Ms. Kikisha. And I, and I think we should begin to kind of, you know, begin to work to to incorporate that that verse. But uh, we we won't uh, we won't attempt it uh, this morning. And so if we could have everybody stand for the closing. Lift your voice. Let every voice and see till the finish of the ring. Ring with the heart of me of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the living skies. Let it resound. Loud as the road sea, sing a song full of the faith that the darkness has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. Of a new day, let us march on till victory. So, everybody, touch somebody's hand. Yeah. And we want to say, wherever you are, whether you are here in the sanctuary, if you're on Zoom in Sacramento, if you're in Virginia, like Minister Makalisi, if you are in Texas, if you are in Los Angeles, wherever you are, if you are in Ghana. Oh, with God. mommy Dionysia, yeah. we are one will say.
We are one won't say. One won't say, yes. One won't say. One won't say. Hang up with one people. One, one people. One, 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 one goal. One goal. One goal. One destiny. One destiny. One, heart. One, heart. One, God. One, God. one God. One God. One God. One God. One God. One God. We call upon the one we have for, for, from time immemorial. We say, Ah. Uh, uh, I'm in rock. Okay. And as Minister you are the most beautiful people on the earth. Beautiful people on the face of this earth. 